Hi everyone, so today I am here with Ask Kirsten number 30. These are my Q&A videos if you are new to my channel and I try to answer pretty much every single question. I am not afraid to answer most questions. Uh, so if you have any questions that you've been dying to ask me, anything that you just want to know, feel free to put it in the comments below and I will answer it in my next video. So I am here on my phone with Ask Kirsten number 29. I know I have a case that says Kirsten Lechty still. I'm not a Lechty, I'm officially a Krasinski, but I'm waiting for my new phone. I just just ordered the 7 plus uh, to come in so I can get a new case for that thing because I'm really excited anyway sorry I just wanted to mention that. Um, but I'm on the comments here and I'm going to answer your questions there are 95 comments but I think most of them are just like normal comments uh, so whew, not 95 questions even though I think I'd be happy if I had 95 questions to be honest so let's get started. So the first question is from Micah. Hi, Micah. Micah always comments on my videos. Uh, she says, "Was Andrea upset when you told her about the wedding being only the three of you guys since she was in, or since you were in her wedding? Was it awkward telling her?" Uh, so what Micah means is, was it awkward telling Andrea that we weren't having a bridal party because I was a bridesmaid in her wedding? Um, it wasn't awkward. I originally was going to have a bridal party, but because our wedding was so small, I felt like. Our bridal party would be half of our guests and so uh, we decided for it to just be a little bit more sentimental and for it to just be uh, me Brian and then Avery as the flower girl and Andrea was not upset when I told her she totally understood as did most of the other people that were going to be in our bridal party so she definitely wasn't upset and it wasn't awkward telling her either um let's see I get this question a lot. I feel like I've answered this before. This is from Chelsea Gray, and she says, When Avery grows up, if she comes out to you as gay or bisexual, how do you think you will take it? And like I've said before, I wouldn't be disappointed. I wouldn't be upset. I would still be very understanding and loving towards Avery, um, as long as the person that she loves treats her and respects her. Um, the way she deserves to be treated, like a little princess, um, then I'm totally fine with it. Uh, Mara... Hawkheiser. Hopefully I say all of your names correctly. I'm sorry if I mispronounce. I'll probably mispronounce most of them. Uh, she said, any tips for having tons of work while having extracurricular activities? I feel like I have no time and I'm so stressed. I feel you pretty much 100%. I'm always completely stressed out. I always stay up really, really late. This has been a new habit of mine, which I hate, is I come home and everyone goes to bed and I am up till like midnight uh, doing things and I still wake up at like 5.30 the next day and I just like hate my life because I've gotten five hours of sleep. But it's really tough. Um, I always say this, but having really good time management skills is something that I really think helps, um, especially if you have a lot of things going on, kind of setting out, especially even just like going hour by hour and setting out what you need to do, it has to get done or else basically, and that's what's been helping me because with schoolwork and with YouTube and working full time um, it, and having Avery, it's been a little bit tough. Um, and sometimes I have setbacks where I put off doing a paper and then it totally messes up my whole like next day's plans. Uh, so I definitely suggest putting a schedule down, sticking to it. I know I always go back to planning, but planning has really significantly helped me. And I feel like it would help a lot of people. And not You don't have to just like decorate your planner if you don't want to. That's just what I love to do. I think it just helps me and it's just pretty and it's a creative outlet. But I really feel like it also helps me manage my time a lot better. Before I had my planner when I was in school, well not even because I've always had some sort of planner even if it was just something I wrote in with a pencil um, and I even had that out of high school before I got into like decorative planning but it's always been very 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 helpful for me and I highly suggest just even if you have like a blank notebook writing down everything like hour by hour, hour I really think it'll help um, Sushi Shah says, since your degree is in healthcare administration, what kind of jobs can you apply for slash what are you interested in? There's a lot of different things that I'm interested in and there's also a lot of things you can apply for. Um, I definitely suggest looking up what jobs you can get with the healthcare administration degree, but the things I am going for, um, mostly I would love to work in a hospital. I actually was at a hospital with Avery that I was just like completely obsessed with and I, when I walked in the door I told Brian, I was like, I want to work here. I want to work here so bad. Um, but I really want to work basically in like bookkeeping. Um, any sort of like administrative duties. Um, 
I'm not sure what specific job I want yet, but I know I want a lot of like bookkeeping and accountant style jobs for hospitals. Jessica Evans says, I know you'll be married when you make the next Ask Kirsten. So what has changed from being together before being married and now after the wedding? Honestly, nothing has changed um, except for my last name. Uh, we do the same things every day. We still have the same schedule. I mean, it really helps that we've been together for such a long time and we've been living together for such a long time because I feel like if we had not been like living together, maybe not had a kid, not been dating for so long, things would be a little bit different. Like I feel like it would be like a, a switch and we would be like doing things differently, but we, have, we do the same exact stuff. Like our lives are the exact same. <laughs> Alexandra Jaskova says, I love you. I love you too, Alexandra. You comment on a lot of my videos. Uh, she says, what's on your Christmas wish list? I actually don't have anything, I don't think. Actually, I do, and it's really boring. It's a vacuum. We really, really, really need a vacuum cleaner. We have a broom, and we have a Swiffer mop. We do not have a vacuum, and we need one, and vacuums are expensive, but, like, I really want one. Um, but I guess things other than that, I don't know, just a vacuum. That's like all I want right now is a vacuum. Um, Michelle M says, any meal planning tips, advice for being new to planning? If some ask you to plan their wedding and hire you, would you do it? Would you ever switch out of your Erin Condren life planner? Um, meal planning tips. So uh, for me, what I used to do, I've actually been really bad at meal planning lately. We've been be so bad about eating at home. We've been eating out a lot and it's just like, ugh, it's been the worst. I want to get back to eating at home more. Um, but now that the holidays are here and we're traveling, it's going to be rough. But meal planning tips for me, what I love to do is sit down on like Saturdays or Sundays and plan out what meals I want to eat the next week. Uh, we mostly do dinners. I don't really plan lunches or breakfast. I've actually started skipping breakfast, which is so bad for you. Don't do it. But I've been doing it just to save time and I hate myself for it. Uh, but yeah, just sit down like the Sunday before the week and plan out what meals you would like to try and eat. Um, advice for being new to planning. Um, that's hard because I feel like I could make a video on it, but I also feel like I wouldn't know what to say, which is what leaves me in this position now. I'm not sure what to say. Um, being new to planning, I definitely suggest kind of searching, do, watching comparison videos on YouTube of different planners. Don't just jump into one specific planner because you've seen so many people use it. Um, definitely kind of look and see what planner would best suit you, whether it be an Erin Condren, a Happy Planner, a Recollections Planner. Um, anything like inserts, anything like that. I feel like inserts would be perfect for a lot of people. Um, and then kind of go from there. And I also say don't go and purchase a ton of stickers at once because you never know what you're going to want to use. Um, so definitely like samplers are really good. Maybe buy one kit and see from what kit, what you use from that kit. And then, you know, justify whether you want an ultimate kit, a mini kit, a personal size kit. Um, just what stickers and kind of gauge how you want to do that. Um, I definitely don't say go all in first because then you're just like overwhelmed and you don't know what to do. Um, if someone asked me to plan their wedding and hire me, would I do it? I don't know. I liked planning my wedding and if I had the time and if someone was truly, truly, truly interested in me planning their wedding, um, I would probably think about it um, because I feel like that would be a lot of fun. And then would I ever want to switch out of my Erin Condren life planner? As of right now, I'm very, very comfortable in my Erin Condren. I just feel very like I have been, you know, planning in it. Well, I've been per honestly planning in an Erin Condren now for almost a year, um, but I was planning kind of in something similar last year. I was planning in a plum paper planner, which is very similar. Um, and I really love it. I love it a lot. But I do also very much so love my inserts. I just don't have enough room in my inserts for my huge to-do lists. So that's why I stick with my Erin Condren. Although I have wanted to try bullet journaling, but again, I don't have the handwriting for bullet journaling. Um, what does that say? Devilish Tenshi. Hopefully I said that right. Um, what are Avery's favorite things slash toys right now? What are your favorite items you have to make life easier with her? Her favorite toys right now, she has a little shopping cart that she loves and she pushes it around and she just puts everything. Like there's shoes in there. She has a little purse that's in there. Like she's so funny and she doesn't push it the right way. She pushes it like, you know how you push it and it's like long ways. She turns it sideways and pushes it sideways. She's so silly. Um, she loves that. She loves her little dolls and she loves books. That's something I forgot to mention in her 21 month update, but that girl is obsessed with books. I have this book. Well, there's a couple that she loves, but I have one called Five Little Pumpkins that I got for Halloween. She makes you read it twice and then you have to sing it because she's obsessed with that and she's also obsessed with Moo Ba La La La. That's like her favorite. Um, obsessed with books. My favorite things for her to make life easier with her 
honestly right now she's like so good like she's been so content with books and playing and she's very like independent right now she's kind of in that stage where she doesn't really need me yet like well she doesn't need me yet but she doesn't she doesn't need me right now like she feels like comfortable playing like I don't have to be right next to her although I pretty much am right next to her 24 7 unless she's away from me and I'm at work um but she's she's been pretty good anything to help with her I guess just books really have been really helping her whenever she gets really upset if I start like reading a book to her even though I don't have the book sometimes I can just say the words because I'm obviously I've memorized it I've read it a thousand times um she gets like calmer which is actually funny. I'll have to find, like, I'll have to film it, like, film it one day because it's pretty funny how, like, she'll start bawling and I'll read it to her and she's like, <laughs> it's really cute. Um, Emily Finnegan says, I have a couple of questions. How, uh, one, how long have you watched Big Brother? What's your favorite season house guest? And do you, and do you and Brian watch it together? And two, I'm interested in starting to plan with stickers and I was wondering if Etsy is the only place slash the cheapest place to buy the stickers. There are many cute ones on Etsy, but what, buying weekly kits would be super expensive for me. So to answer your first question, how long have I watched Big Brother? I started watching Big Brother when I was pregnant. I actually just found out I was pregnant. So that would have been in 2014 was the first season I watched, which was BB16. That's the season that Derek won. And then, but I have recently, so I've watched 16, 17, 18. I'm not watching Over the Top, but I will watch it when it's over. Um, but I have also watched recently, like I went and watched on the CBS thing. So I watched 15 just recently and I am currently watching, and I'm currently watching BB14. So I'm going back and watching all of the seasons kind of backwards. Um, so right now I'm currently watching BB14. I think I'm on episode like 14 or 15. Janelle just got evicted. But um, yeah, so my favorite season probably would be the first season I ever watched, which was BB16, um, just because I felt like it was just really funny and I really liked everybody in the house. And my favorite house guest... <sighs> Can I say favorite house guest by season? So currently BB14, I liked Janelle, but I also like Dan, and Dan I know obviously has won the previous season, but I like Dan um, and Ian, but I know Ian wins. And then BB15, I liked, who did I like? I liked Andy, I liked Helen, I liked McRae, and that was really it I think for BB15. And then BB16, I liked pretty much everyone, Zach, Cody, Derek, Nicole, um, Caleb, I, I pretty much liked everybody. And then 17, honestly I don't think I liked anybody BB17. I was like not a fan. I liked Devon, Devon, I said Devon, Devon, I liked her a lot and like that was like my only favorite. And then BB18, I liked Paul and Victor, those were like my favorites. So those are my favorites, and then do I, Brian doesn't watch Big Brother, I don't know, he just won't watch it with me. I don't think he's even seen it, so I don't even know why he won't watch it with me. Sorry, I feel like that was the longest answer to that question. Um, her second question was asking about the stickers. Etsy is obviously not the only place you can purchase stickers. You can also go to like Michael's or any craft store. I've personally never used any stickers that I've purchased from Michael's or I've never purchased stickers from Michael's. So um, I guess if you want to just do a bunch of like multicolor things or kind of like a create your own kit sort of thing, um, it may be cheaper to go to Michael's, but I do personally prefer to shop from Etsy. I just feel like I like it a little bit more, but it's, I mean, it's open for discussion. Anyone can like any stickers. It does not matter to me. Everyone has their own opinion. Okay, so this is from Leaf Jasmine B. Um, she says, I just wanted to ask what do you and Brian work as at SPC and what are you looking forward to in Avery's growth? Uh, and what was your funniest moment at your wedding? So what do Brian and I both do at SPC? So Brian and I both work on the silhouettes. We each have six silhouettes and we cut stickers all day and then we also hand cut them and then collate the kits. Um, and occasionally package the mystery kits. And then I, so that's what we both do, but I also work all the printers. So I currently am running 24 printers and I think we're getting more. So um, that's what I do. I do I do a little bit more, but I would basically do the exact same thing. What am I looking forward to in Avery's growth? Currently, I am looking forward to, and I have talked about this a lot in her updates, but she's not really talking that much, but I am looking forward to when she does finally start talking because I cannot wait to hear her little voice say words. She has the sweetest little voice, and I can't wait to hear her say words. So I'm very excited for that. And then the funniest moment at my wedding? Uh, I don't know if we had, like, super funny moments. Um, 
Honestly, I can't think of any, and that's probably weird. I just can't think of a funny moment right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, the wedding was fun. I had a lot of fun, but I don't remember, like, specifically laughing at something hard enough at the wedding. Chloe po por oh, God, I just, like, stuttered over that. Chloe Porter says, My question for next time is if you had to narrow down your makeup collection to 10 products or less, including brushes, what would they be? Including brushes, that is the w Sorry about that. My card was full, so I just had to go offload all the videos that I had on there because I've been filming quite a bit today. Um, but ugh, to answer Chloe's question, so including brushes is very, very hard. Um, so I was thinking about it while I was offloading my camera, but foundation, beauty blender, powder, powder brush, mascara, highlight, with a highlight brush of course, um, and then probably like two lip colors and maybe eyeliner, but I'm not sure because like I would either go between eyeliner and contour, and I would say contour just because I could use my powder brush to kind of dust it. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it's not that hard because I haven't worn makeup that like I don't wear makeup that much anymore. Um, I feel like if I was like super into makeup the way I used to be, this would be a lot more difficult. But I wear like the most basic makeup if I do wear makeup anymore, like today. So yeah. <laughs> Jessica Ogden says, "Are you filming your wedding?" So we didn't personally vlog our wedding, but it was filmed. Um, we recorded for four months for the pictures. I'm not too sure about the video so I'll have the pictures and I'll probably post all of them on Instagram like I did when we did get married I had a few pictures that were taken by friends and family um, but we did get our wedding filmed I just don't know when we're gonna get that video hopefully soon though guys Samantha Klinowski says what do you hope that Avery takes away from her childhood and passes on to her children what values do you hope she continues to follow so I honestly Brian and I have talked about this a lot but we really hope that she is very like polite and has a lot of manners and is very respectful respectful excuse me towards everyone um, not just like older people but is respectful towards her peers and people younger than her that's something that we've been trying to instill in her early on and we still try to uh, just like please thank you yes ma'am no ma'am um, just basic just basic common manners for everyone we always we always tell her to say thank you and um, just be as polite as possible really um, Mara, Mara Hochheiser also says, can you make parenting videos? I try to do as much info, I guess, in her update videos, but if there's any specific parenting type video that you would like to see from me, I can definitely try and do that. Alyssa Reed says, also, how, do you have any advice on, oh, I almost tried to reply, sorry. <laughs> also, do you have any advice on how to keep your family involved in Avery's life since you do live in different states? Um, it's hard actually. What we do and what Brian does is Brian talks to his parents every single day. I talk to my parents about like once or twice a week. Um, that's just how we've always been. But he tries to FaceTime his dad and his mom every single day with Avery and I try to Skype and also FaceTime my parents uh, pretty much once a week with her as well. We try to do that as much as possible uh, just so she still recognizes them, remembers their faces, recognizes their voices. And so far that's definitely seemed to help. Uh, she's met my mom about four times in her whole entire life. and when my my parents came um, well it wasn't really much of a difference like we went to visit my parents in Utah in June or J July June I think we went in June to Utah to visit my mom and then she came down in October for our wedding so it wasn't like a super far span um, but with Avery being so young sometimes she can you know she doesn't really remember that many things but because we have FaceTimed her you know pretty much once or twice a week she recognized her instantly recognized her voice um, and that was really really nice and that's something that I think we should definitely continue doing because um, it keeps them involved in their lives and I love it. Mara Hellkaiser also says, how many kids do you want? Also, how many kids did you say you wanted when you were younger? When I was younger, I actually said I never wanted any kids. I was pretty scared of childbirth, and even after having one kid, I am still kind of scared of childbirth. It was pretty scary, but um, um, definitely now, after having Avery, I do think I want one more right now. Um, I think one more would be nice, but I don't want another baby right now. I definitely want to wait until for like another year or so um, and just kind of get myself like together and financially be ready and have like a, a house maybe before we have another kid. I just want everything to be kind of ready before we have another baby this time and we're not rushing. Um, but I think two right now. I don't know. <laughs> Brittany Wilson says, what do you do with Avery's clothes when she outgrows them? That's a good question. I keep them. <laughs> I have all of them. I have them all in totes, and I could sell them. Um, I could give them away, but 
I am so weird and I just want them all to myself forever um, but I'm sure eventually when she's like 18 or 30 um, I will give them away but they're just so little and cute right now that I have kept uh, everything. Um, Ashlyn Carney says when you and Brian started getting serious in y'all's relationship did you lose any friends? No, um, we actually, our friend groups kind of just combined, and it's funny at the time because my little friend group that I was friends with when we started dating sophomore year of high school, and his little friend group, uh, they all started, like, dating. <laughs> so me and Brian started dating, and the other two started dating, and the other two started dating, and we all kind of, like, meshed. Um, but then they all, like, broke up, and now they all have, like, their own lives, but we're all still kind of friends. Uh, but, like, yeah, our friend groups kind of just meshed and started dating, so y'all, y'all are welcome. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Alyssa Marie, or Alyssa Mariah, I'm sorry. She says, hey, Kirsten, I have a couple of questions for your next Q&A video. How do you budget with buying kits? I love planning with kits, and it helps motivate me to use my planner and stick to my plans. And would like to my, buy more, but not sure how to budget, um, slash not spend as much money on them. And then to answer that question, she also has another paragraph to answer that question. Uh, for me, I, well, I work for Scribble Prints Co., so everything that I get from Scribble Prints, I get for free. So that's why a lot of my kits are from Scribble Prints Co. But um, for me, I just really stick to buying what I really, 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 really want. Um, but for the most part, printables are also an option, and they're really inexpensive. And especially right now in the holidays, a lot of shops are having sales. So I would stock up, especially when shops are having sales, um, because if you really, really want want a few kits from that shop it's better to stock up and use a coupon code and use it during a sale versus just buying them individually and paying for shipping individually her second paragraph says my boyfriend and I have been together for almost two years and live with his parents we are out of the cupcake phase as some call it and our relationship has become comfortable I sometimes find myself missing how it was in the beginning have you and Brian dealt with this and how did you keep the spark within the relationship uh, we have dealt with this many times um, we actually do it, we go through this phase quite a bit because we get into a routine, and me specifically, I kind of like being in a routine of like doing the same exact thing every day, but what we've actually been doing recently, sorry, I wanted to get comfortable, uh, what we've actually been doing recently and what we plan to continue doing is, since Avery is in daycare full time, um, one day, like a month, we take her to daycare for the day, and instead of going to work, we go watch a movie, or we go shopping together, or we go like on a date, we just have a date day where we go and do stuff and spend time together and especially with having a kid I can see how well you don't have a kid but for us especially having a kid I can see how we get into that sort of routine because you know we focus more on her than we do you know our relationship which isn't a bad thing but it's not you know necessarily a good thing either so we try to kind of keep the spark alive continue doing things like that but when I did live with his mom or and his dad I lived with both of his parents at one point um, and we were kind of in a routine as well. We sort of did that as well before we had Avery. We would take a time to go spend a whole day doing something together when we both had off and try and just, just have the day together and not really focus on anything other than our relationship. And that's something that we've been trying to do and I think it's been working so hopefully it works for you too. Uh, Tony Mason says, are you still in touch with your friends from California? I am. B says, thanks for answering my last question. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just want to know your thoughts on breastfeeding in public and how you would deal with someone who disapproves and causes issues. I think it's I, it's no big deal to me, honestly. If someone's breastfeeding their kid in public, they're feeding their child. I don't think it's disrespectful. I don't think it's gross. I don't think it's rude. It's normal. Um, and if I were to do it and someone came up to me and said something the way I've seen some people say things in like Facebook videos, I feel like I would be really mean and like offended and I don't know. I just think it's kind of, I think it's really, 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 really rude and arrogant um, and ignorant to go up to somebody and tell them that they can't feed their child in public, like breastfeed them. Like that's literally how everyone was fed before formula was invented and that's like the normal way. Like I don't, I don't understand why that causes issues issues for people like it just it blows my mind um xoxo lng 15 you said you have dry skin and i'm the same way i have a hard time finding a good foundation what kind do you recommend uh two foundations that i truly truly love the first one is the one i'm actually wearing today which is the revlon color stay for dry skin um that's been working for me and that's a drugstore option a high-end option that i really love is the tarte amazonian clay um it's kind of sort of like a moussey foundation so it feels really good on your skin um and it doesn't like cake up like mine always like cakes up around my nose because that's like where i'm super super dry 
so I recommend those and I also just recommend like moisturizing the crap out of your face before applying anything um, I find that that really works too Erica Starr says how do you feel about the new bachelor the new bachelor I can't read today um, and if you guys don't know Nick V is the new bachelor which I think is so funny that they're doing someone who's been in the bachelor franchise like previously if that makes sense like a lot of times like he was on two separate bachelorettes and he's on bachelor in paradise um i think the way they announced it was kind of weird because he was still technically on bachelor in paradise i like nick i don't have a problem with him um i think he's handsome i think he's nice but i do kind of wish they would have stuck with the same algorithm that they've been sticking with and going like picking someone from jojo's bachelorette i really wanted luke like my heart was set on luke and when they announced nick i was just like what? Like, this makes no sense. But I'm not mad. I'm just like, I wanted it to be Luke. Um, Taylor Hunt says, first of all, by the time you read this, you will be married. So I want to say congratulations. Thank you. Uh, and now my questions. What are your top five favorite planning YouTube channels? And what is your favorite beauty channels? Um, top five favorite planning YouTube channels. Scribble Prince Co., Girl in a Magical World, J. Crew Plans, Pretty Planning. Who else do I watch? Cole Lexia Designs, what am I saying? She just uploaded like a 50 minute haul. Her haul videos, I live for them because they're so long and beautiful and amazing. So yeah, sorry about that. School Prince Co., Nicole Lexia Designs, Girl in a Magical World, J. Crew Plans, and um, Pretty Planning. My five favorites. Beauty YouTubers or beauty channels. Um, I don't watch that many beauty channels anymore. I've mostly stuck in like the planning, vlogging, mommy videos. Those are like my favorites. Um, but I still love like Nicole Guerrero, Carly Bible. Um, Pretty Bible, who else do I watch? Allison Henry, Haley Seeger, Seeger, Haley Seeger. I feel like I said that wrong, I'm so sorry. Um, I feel like that's it too. I feel bad. I like, I feel like I watch like just vlogs lately. Like that's like all I watch. Uh, Craft Life Whirl says, would you like having short hair or long hair? I personally prefer having long hair. Um, I've always had kind of longer hair. This isn't the longest my hair's ever been on this channel, especially. Um, but when I cut it short that one time, I just was not happy with it. So I definitely prefer having long hair. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> Madison Moreno says, what are some of your favorite things to do in Austin? Have you explored downtown and 6th Street? I live in Houston and really want to make a trip up there soon. I love Austin. I've done quite a bit of exploring. Um, my favorite things to do, just explore really, um, eat. Um, and go new places. We like doing the 360 overlook a lot. We take pretty much everyone there, which is, uh, oh my god, what bridge is that? It's the bridge on 360. I don't even know what the bridge is called, but we go to the, th the 360 overlook all the time, um, and that's a lot of fun. We've been wanting to go to Mount Bonnell, but we haven't done that yet. Sorry, I thought my card was full again. And then we go downtown a lot. Um, and we also like to explore North Austin because we live in North Austin. Um, and yes, I have explored downtown in 6th Street. I have been on 6th Street once um, to like, I guess, go to the bars. And that was a lot of fun. I had a really good time doing that. And I want to go again for my birthday, actually. So I love 6th Street. Tony Mason says, I just rewatched your 55 questions before marriage videos with Brian. And I was wondering, what is your favorite video you have filmed with Brian? My favorite video... Probably the first boyfriend tag we ever did. I feel like that was so like awkward and funny, and I, I think I still have it up on my channel. Um, don't watch it. Oh my god, I feel like just saying don't watch it, everyone's gonna go watch it. Um, but it's just like awkward, you know, because it's like six ish years ago. Um, that's probably my favorite, just because that was like the first one we ever filmed. Pretty much every video we filmed together, I really enjoy. Um, and I really liked when we live streamed, those were always really fun, but now it's like really hard to do that. But I like doing that. Um, Chelsea Griffin says, I love that you were enjoying Texas. Are you planning on doing a family Halloween costume theme? Uh, so obviously Halloween's already passed, but uh, I filmed, or I uploaded this video before Halloween. But we didn't do a Halloween costume family theme. We were going to, and I really want to every year, um, but it was kind of hard this year. I really didn't know what costume to get Avery. We were going to DIY one, but I just... I don't know, I wasn't happy with the, what I was going to do with it, so we ended up just getting a little witch costume from Babies R Us, and I think she looked precious, like she was so cute, but I didn't really know how to kind of go with that, like I was going to do like a Hocus Pocus theme, but I didn't feel like Brian would be up for being another Sanderson sister, I just don't feel like he would have liked that too much. Um, so instead Brian and I went as Dexter and one of Dexter's victims, but I thought it was still pretty fun. Um, Danielle Langley says, do you see the vlogs coming back on a regular schedule anytime soon? 
Brian wants to continue vlogging um, soon. We actually vlogged a little bit today, but I'm not sure if he's going to upload it or not. I told him I will vlog as long as he is in charge of the vlog channel and editing and everything because I just have too much on my plate right now. And I feel like his plate's a little empty, so he can kind of fill it a little bit if he needs to. Uh, so that's all on him, but we hope to vlog this holiday season and just kind of get into a regular schedule of trying to vlog again. She also said, what would be your realistic dream job? What would be your unrealistic dream job be? Like, it is improbable you would ever do it, but still would want to. So realistic dream job, obviously, would be to do anything involving my degree, which is healthcare administration, just being a hospital administrator, really. Unrealistic dream job, <laughs> um, stay-at-home mom. <laughs> And I know that's not unrealistic because I know everyone can do that, but actually no, not stay-at-home mom, but like a stay-at-home mom that runs like a little business on the side at home, like can just like be at home all the time, like that's all I want to do. Like I don't want to have to leave my house. Like all I want to do is be a hermit. Um, so I really want to do that. Hopefully that didn't offend anybody. I don't want that to come across offensive because I know being a stay-at-home mom is like a hard job because I was a stay-at-home mom the first three months that Avery was born and I felt very exhausted every day. Like I would sleep when she slept and I still felt exhausted and having to clean, like no thanks. But um, yeah, that's like really what I want to do. But I have to work. Uh, any tips for young couples budgeting slash ways to save money? <sighs> Yikes. Um... Something that we do and something that I feel everyone should do is put aside money every time you get paid, uh, whether it be $20, whether it be $100. Uh, whenever you get paid, put aside a little bit of money. Don't spend it. I know it's hard not to for us. It's really hard not to spend money. Sorry, I just drank some soda, so I'm like hiccupy. Um, but it, it's hard, but if you like don't look at it, pretend it's not there, um, eventually you'll have some money saved up, which is always nice. So we try to put just a little bit away every every time we get paid which is eventually paid off too especially because Avery was just in the hospital and hospital bills are starting to roll in and it was very very expensive um, so having that savings is very very helpful so I definitely say that uh, Chelsea Jones I actually have a lot of questions I didn't realize uh, she says if you could travel anywhere in the world where would you travel um, you're so sweet. Uh, if I could travel anywhere I really want to go out of the country I've never been out of the country I've been to Canada um, but I want to go somewhere like across the ocean so I've always wanted to go out of the country and I also really want to go to like Hawaii I've been actually craving to go to Hawaii for such a long time now like I really want to go uh, Janie Buckley says I always get so excited when you talk about North Carolina because this is where I've been raised for pretty much my whole life is there anything you miss about it I'm actually dating someone in the military and I always wonder if he's stationed to the same base you grew up in uh, well I grew up at Camp Lejeune so if he's stationed at Camp Lejeune then maybe um, what, anything I miss about it? Um, yeah, there's tons of stuff I miss about it. Pretty much most of our friends still live there, and we are going to North Carolina in December. One of our friends is getting married, uh, so I'm very excited about that. But I just miss, I mean, it's a comfortable place for us, you know, so we grew up there, we lived there for a while, so it's like a comfortable place for us to be. Um, it's where we went to high school, so I miss all of our teachers. Like, I know when we go back, I'm going to try and uh, get lunch with one of our favorite teachers and show him Avery because <laughs> she was two days old when he first met her and she is now almost two. So I, I miss our friends, I miss our teachers, I miss our school. Um, I miss restaurants there. There's some rest there's a hibachi restaurant there. Hibachi here is weird. It's just not good. Like Texas is good food but hibachi not good. No, not good. At least the two places we've been. Uh, but there's a hibachi restaurant in North Carolina that is banging that I want to go back to so bad. Uh, but yeah, I just miss how comfortable it is. And cookout. I miss cookout in Smithfields. <laughs> Those places are so good. Um, everyone says, P.S. Love you. Hello, love you. I love you guys. You guys are so sweet. Um, okay, and the last two questions are from Tegan. She says, what products and tips would you give to a makeup beginner? Um... What I like to do is watch a lot of YouTube videos and try to take tips and tricks. I can never say tips and tricks correctly. Uh, take tips and tricks, tricks <laughs> from YouTube videos. That's what I did pretty much the entire time I first started wearing makeup. And that's why I feel like my makeup has improved, I guess. Um, a lot more is because I learned from watching YouTube. Uh, so definitely just watch a ton of YouTube videos. Like, I feel like that really helped me. And then, would you ever visit Australia? If you did, where would you visit? I would love to visit Australia. Um, I don't know where. Probably, I mean, I guess Sydney would be, like, the first thing I would say because I feel like that's probably one of the more popular cities in Australia. Um, but I would just love to visit. I Honestly, I also want to go to where the crocodile hunters, like, zoo area is. 
not a huge fan of reptiles, but I would just go because I loved the crocodile hunter uh, growing up, and I'm sure that was probably like the weirdest answer. But can I tell you guys a quick story, actually? And this is really embarrassing, and Brian, would, if he watches this video, would be like cringing this whole time because I tell this story, and he's like, Kirsten, this is the dumbest story. So when I was growing up, my stepdad's sister, so my aunt, uh, she, my Aunt Heather, <laughs> I probably shouldn't say her name, it's just so funny, my aunt, um, she used to have this like cardboard cutout of Steve, Steve Irwin, and she would tell me that she was her, his, like her husband, she'd be like, yeah, that's your Uncle Steve, that's your Uncle Steve, and I would 100% believe it, and then when Steve Irwin passed away, I would like, I was really upset, I was like, my Uncle Steve died, and like, and now, like, whenever Brian, like, I don't know, we don't casually bring it up all the time, but, like, whenever, for some reason, it gets brought up, I'm like, oh, yeah, Uncle Steve, and Brian's, like, in the background, like, Kristen, shut up, because he knows the story is coming, that I 100% believed Steve Irwin was my uncle, like, my entire life. That's my story, so, probably really stupid, but I hope you guys enjoyed this Ask Kirsten. Any questions, any at all, put them in the comments, y'all know I answer them. I'll do what I can. Uh, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.